we have PetraCore. So what? first off, what are you all looking at? Well, you have the main game board here, which has the victory point track around the outside. We have a round track just inside there. Then we have the different four weather types, and there's a little arrow right here that is possibly going to come into play uh, as the game goes along. We have three harvest dice, which have different faces on them that we will uh, roll before we get started. And then we also have the weather track as far as victory points. Anytime you see this little crop symbol, that is going to be a victory point indicator for in-game scoring. Then over on the left-hand side there, we have the various crop tiles. Now, there are a total of, I think, 16 in the game, but in a four-player game, you can see that we have a four by three grid there. And there are different types of crops. We have wheat, we have coffee, we have cotton, we have potatoes, we have corn, we have rice, etc., etc. So different types of crops that we're going to try and water to grow to score victory points. And that, that's the, those are the two main boards, even though these are made up of various tiles. Then, over here, we have the actual uh, little crop or growing tokens, which are double-sided. They have a sprouting side, which is this side, and a growing side on that side. Then we have wheat tokens, which are just wheat tokens on both sides. Those are going to come into play for the three wheat tiles that are in there. Then we have thunder clouds or lightning bolts. So anytime a regular or a light cloud becomes a thunder cloud, we're going to mark it with a thunderbolt to show that it's a thundercloud. Then we have the actual clouds and they're little cups that you put together when you get the game. And these will be holding our raindrops. And the raindrops are our little, if you've played any number of various games, you're gonna be familiar with these glass beads in the various colors. Those represent uh, each player's raindrops. And then from there, we have our votes. These are called, these little wooden markers here are going to be votes for the type of weather events or weather seasons kind of that we're going to be triggering as the game goes along. There's also a deck of cards, which I will show you here in detail here momentarily. The first player marker is a cloud. It seemed appropriate, so we left it a cloud instead of our normal challenge coin. And last but not least, there's some 50 or 100 point markers if you eclipse the 50 or do it, you know, really well and do it twice. There are also some player aid cards that are double-sided which are going to be off screen for y'all. Then, as I mentioned, there are four different types of cards. So you have frost, sun, wind, and rain cards. And you know this both by the artwork as well as the symbology that they have mostly in the top corner, the top left and top right hand corner. We're all going to be getting a deck of, or a, a hand of cards as we go along. But nonetheless, you have three different symbols, the type of weather that it is, then a potential secondary action for when you do your voting, or just a reminder that you can always adjust one of the harvest die. And you'll notice that that is the same on all four of the cards. So those are the four cards that we're going to have in our hands and all of the components that you see here. Now, these guys here, these are not included in the game and we only have four of them. But if you ever have ordered delivery pizza, these are the little stands that they put in the middle of the pizza box so that your pizza lid doesn't get attached to the, 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 the cheese the or the yeah. topping. And the reason we're going to have that is because we're going to have clouds out here like so, and there's going to be glass beads or raindrops that will end up down here underneath, and it just makes it a little bit easier to use, but also, let's face it, it's just kind of cool. So that's the reason we have brought those in. Thanks to our good buddy Derek for letting us bum his. <laughs> so that's everything that you guys are actually looking at here, but how do you play the game? Well, the goal of the game is victory points. As I mentioned uh, earlier, we have a victory point track around the outside. Around the outside. So points are going to be awarded during a harvest. Now a harvest may happen at the end of any of the first five rounds. It may, meaning it may not. So if there's no harvest, you're not going to score points that round. It will always happen at the end of the last round, which in our case is going to be the sixth round. On the other side of this board is a four round game, but 
This is heavy cardboard. We're playing the sixth round <laughs> version. All right. All right. You're also going to score points uh, for any time that you choose to reduce these harvest dice. I'll explain that in detail. And the last time, last thing that you're going to be scoring points for is whenever you have voting majorities, you're going to move your uh, marker up this uh, weather track or voting track. And those will score points as they're shown at the end of the game. Those are the three ways that you're going to be scoring points. But how do you play the game? Well, the game takes place, as I said, over six rounds. In our case, could be four. There's no difference other than two less rounds in the four-round four game. Each round has four phases or may have four phases. The first one is the action phase, which is kind of the meat of the game, kind of. The second phase is the weather phase, which is going to have to do with this. The action phase will be over on this side. The third phase, which may or may not happen, is the harvest phase, which is going to be the scoring, if that does actually happen. And then, of course, a cleanup phase at the end, but obviously we're going to skip the cleanup phase at the end of the sixth round. All right, so how does the game play? Well, action phase first and foremost everyone's going to be dealt a number of cards the number of cards is going to be determined by the player count and i believe in a four player game it's going to be a total of six cards so we're going to deal out six cards to each player those cards again look just like that it'll be some mix and match there the deck is 40 cards there are 10 of each of those different suits or weather on them mm -hmm. then on your turn you can do one of two things. You can either play cards or pass. When you pass, you're out. And a number of things also will happen when you pass, but we'll skip that for right now. Let's talk about when you actually take actions. When you take an action, the main action on your turn is you can play any one card from your hand. So for instance, let's say on my turn, I play this frost card, all right? Each of the different cards has a different available action in which you can do. But we're not going to go into the detail of that quite yet. But what I do want to point out is when you play a card, you take that associated action. Whether it's a frost card or whether it's a sun card, etc., etc., you will take the associated action for it. Then you will be able to vote. Voting is taking one of your voting discs and placing it out on the associated weather out there. You might be asking yourself, well, which one can I choose? Can I choose any of them? Well, the answer is no. It all depends on the card that you play. If you play a sun card, you can always place it on a sun, on the sun weather, or whatever other one that it shows down below it, which is always clockwise one weather around. So in this case, it being wind. So what that means is you could place on the sun or clockwise is wind. Meaning if I played a sun or a wind card, it will always have wind or rain on it. If mm -hmm. I play a frost card, it will be frost or sun. So on and so forth. That makes sense. Yeah. Yep. If you choose not to place one of your discs, which this is going to be kind of an area majority scoring, I'm sorry, an area control scoring on that. If you choose not to do so, you can, in lieu of doing that, reduce any of these harvest dice. These harvest dice have six sides. They're six-sided dice, obviously. They have harvest on one side, harvest on another. They're rolled whenever they show the harvest side. We'll get into that in detail in a bit. Otherwise, they have a number of, call of them, uh, pips, for lack of a better way to put it. Mm -hmm. You can reduce this by one value. So from a three to a two, a two to a one, or if it only had one on it, it would then be reduced down to the harvest side. Mm -hmm. For doing so, you immediately score one victory point for doing that. The reason that's going to come into play is you only have a harvest if it's the end of the game or if all three of these dice have been reduced to their harvest side. Right. So as a group, we may want to reduce these down to be able to get to a scoring or instead of wor worrying about the area majority area uh, majority scoring out here, you may just try and rack up points by reducing these by one and getting yourself in the group collectively closer to scoring. Does that mm -hmm. make sense? Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. So you play a card like so. 
you do the associated action, and then you place either one vote out, or you uh, you reduce one die down by one pip and score one point. Does that make sense? Yeah. That is the main part of your turn. In addition to that, you can always, I say always, there's one exception, play a secondary action, which is identical to your main action, except for one major thing. Let's say I want to, for my first action, I did a rain action. I did this, I did my voting or whatnot. Okay, good, that's done. Then on my second action, I wish to play a frost action. Well, to be able to do a frost action, it now requires two frost cards. Well, I only have one in my hand, but good news for me, two cards can always be played as a wild, meaning you can make it into any action that you wish. So these two could be a rain card, they could be a frost card, they could be whatever you want. So the first action requires one card of that type, or if you don't have that type, maybe I didn't have this rain card, instead I play these two as a rain card as my first action, or I just play my rain card. The second action I want to play a frost action, well it requires two. I have one frost card, and these two act as a second frost card. I now can do a second action, which is, in this case, the frost action. Then I can vote or reduce a harvest die, just like I did with my main action. That is the crux of the action uh, phase. Does that make sense? Yep. Mm -hmm. Any questions on that? Nope. No. Okay, no. easy enough. So, very briefly, we're going to go over what those four actions are. So, for the frost action, you create a light cloud. Well, a uh, light cloud means not a thunder cloud, and you place it on any tile out here that doesn't already have a tile, and you place one of your raindrops in it. So maybe I choose to place it on there. Easy enough. Boom. That's it. That's a frost card. Yes. Second option is a sun card, and here we go. I'll do this. So we have a frost. Then we have the sun action. The sun action says add two of your drops into a cloud that you're present in. Well, I'm present in that one. Okay, easy enough. Add two drops. Okay, cool. The wind action says move a cloud that you're present in to an adjacent space. Adjacent is always orthogonally adjacent, meaning I cannot move diagonal, but I could move adjacent like so. And also should point out that if you can do the action, you must do the action right. in its entirety if possible. And the last action is a rain action, which says rain any one drop from up to two clouds that you are present in. Mm -hmm. Up to two, meaning you only have to do one. But I only have one cloud here. So rain, what does that mean? It means I take one of my drops and I put it down in the field. And now we can do like so. Now we have a little 3D action, which you guys can't appreciate because you're looking top down, <laughs> but you'll have to take my word for it. It looks amazing from this angle. Yes, it does. <laughs> All right. So those are the four actions that you can take during your action phase. Take one or two of them, if you wish, then you do voting. And voting is, as I said, out here you do that or you reduce a die. Boom, done. That's the action phase. Any questions? Good. We're moving on. <laughs> the second phase is... The, uh, you know what, back up before I get into that. I have to talk about passing. Okay. At any point, if you choose not to take any more actions, or you cannot because you have no cards, you pass. The first player that passes discards any remaining cards that they have left in their hand. Yes. Then they immediately become the first player. They take the cloud token, and that will take effect as of right now, that moment, they become the first player. If they are already the first player, that will move clockwise or counterclockwise one player to the right. So the first player will always move. And the last thing that will happen is everybody else can only take one more action and they cannot take that secondary action. It's only their main action and then vote and that's it. They can't play the two cards to do one action. That's passing. That's only for the first player. Every other player that passes keeps whatever cards they have in their hand, in their hand, for the next round, and their action phase ends. Mm -hmm. The end. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's it for the action phase, okay? Before we move on any further, let's go ahead and talk about the clouds out here and for merging and for overflowing. There are going to be actions that if, for instance, 
let's say, maybe Jess had a couple out there in that cloud, I had some in that cloud, and I played a wind and moved adjacent one cloud. Whenever two clouds converge, they then become a thundercloud, no matter the number of raindrops in them. They become one cloud, so those will combine. We'll take one of those little thunder markers, which actually go on the side pretty cool like that, but you guys can't see it, so we'll do like that. And that's now a thundercloud. Also, if a cloud ever has four or more drops of any mix of colors, it becomes a thundercloud immediately. Easy yep. enough. The overflow means if any point a cloud has eight or more raindrops in it, it immediately, let's say for whatever reason, there were eight or more in there, they immediately drop out, and any time a cloud empties, it then comes back into the supply to later become a new cloud, and those will stay onto the tile like so. Any questions about any of those? Really easy, right? Yeah. yeah. All right. So that's phase one. Phase two is the weather. We resolve the weather spaces. These out here. This is really simple. It's going to be majorities and whatever two have the most out there. So let's just say for argument's sake, it were like so. We would do the sun weather action, then we would do the rain action after that. In addition to that, whoever has the majority in that space will advance their marker up one on the weather track for in-game scoring. So in this case, as you can see, obviously, I would move up one, and then Jess would move up one. However, if, and we'll bring you guys into the game, if they were tied like so, it's friendly when it comes to ties. Both yellow, I'm sorry, green and blue would move up in that case. Mm -hmm. uh, in a two-player game, I think that uh, ties, uh, nobody moves up, but neither here nor there. So we would resolve these in whatever has the majority of discs on it, or votes. However, in this case, if it were like so, whoever is the first player chooses what activates. And in, so, in other words, so even though there are two of each, in that case, well, the first player would choose which one activates first, and then we would go from there. Check that. I had it right. Never mind. Yeah, you when, right. yeah. It, the first player would choose which one activates first, yes. and then the other one would activate second. Mm -hmm. All right, there we go. Easy enough. All right. Then these whatever ones activate clear off. So in other words, if we had something like this, and I'm sorry, Shrey, yours are too far to reach, <laughs> so you apparently you're not playing right now. <laughs> if it were like this, this would activate, or this would activate first. The other one would activate second. Those would move up appropriately like so. Those would then come off the board back into our supplies. Any ones that did not activate would remain there for subsequent rounds until they activate. Mm -hmm. The exception to that is the end of the round or the end of the game in which everything that has a disc on it will activate, but that's neither here nor there. And I'm not going to go over the detail. I'll go over them very briefly, but I'm not going to go over them in detail. So we'll start with the frost one, mm -hmm. all light clouds become thunder clouds, meaning if they have there and they don't, they're not a thunder cloud, they become a thunder cloud. And once a thunder cloud, always a thunder cloud, regardless of the number of drops in it. Then the sun one, in turn order, choose one cloud and double the amount of drops that you have in there. If I had four drops in there, I now would have eight drops in there. What happens when that happens? It overflows because it would be at eight or more. Easy enough, right? Yeah. Also, there are some special rules with regarding the individual tiles out here, but we'll go over them as we go through our play. The wind uh, weather says that in reverse turn order, move any one drop from a field to an adjacent drop. Again, adjacency is always orthogonally adjacent. What does that mean? It means that anybody, not just Jess, could take one of these and move it over to there if we so desire. Mm -hmm. Okay, Jess could, I could, Shrey could. I move it there, then maybe Jess moves it back for whatever reason. One drop to an adjacent space does not have to be yours. And la last but not least is the rain, which is all the thunderclouds, rain. What does that mean? All thunderclouds there, and they come off the board. And that there are also special rules regarding race regarding that, but we'll get into that in detail there. That's the weather phase. Mm -hmm. Any questions on the weather phase? No. All right. Then, after that, there's the harvest. 
Again, the harvest only happens if all three of the dice show a harvest like so, or it's the end of the game in which a harvest will automatically happen. Right. So conceivably, it is possible that there is no harvest until the end of the game, meaning almost no in-game points other than you moving up here to reduce the harvest dice. It was a lean six years. It was, it was seriously very mm. lean, okay? <laughs> but when that happens in a harvest, you're going to all the growing crops. So now let me bring your attention to the actual tiles here. You'll see that each tile has a raindrop with a number in it. Once there are that many raindrops in on that tile, it then becomes a growing tile. So there must be three, oh, it has three, boom, there. We put a growing tile or a growing token on it. When we have a harvest, we then will score each tile that has a growing token on it. If at any point, maybe during that moving of tokens, somebody moved that off, the moment that happens, no. it now becomes fallow. That comes off because it no longer has a minimum of three drops, mm -hmm. okay? Then we would score based on majorities out here as shown on the individual tiles. Some tiles, like the coffee and the rice, have special rules in which there must be a weather effect specific for that tile to flip over from a budding one to a growing one. Mm -hmm. Easy enough. And they only score when they, or hmm, check that, if they are on the budding side, they will score on the top number. If they are, on, if they have growing, they would flow, they would uh, score on the bottom number. Easy enough. Yes. We would do all that. All the raindrops come off on tiles that score. These tokens come off because obviously it's then going to be below that number. And then you score. The wheat tiles specifically have a little bit of a different uh, scoring in that you're going to get these wheat tokens along with a couple of points if you were in first place. These, whoever has the most of these scores 12 points at the end of the game. Not to be overlooked on that. And ties are friendly. And ties are friendly, sort of. If two players are tied for a, say, first place on a tile, they both score the number below it. So in that case, three points. If we were here, like so, Jess and I wouldn't score five points, we each would score one. Hmm. And then if somebody else were on there, and go ahead, Shrey, throw one out there. Still being mean to Shrey. So first place, they're tied for there, so they would get one, and then the next place would score zero. Sorry, Shrey. Aww. But we would score, we would take those off, et cetera, et cetera. That is the harvest phase. Then we move into the cleanup phase. First thing, advance the round marker. The second thing is if there was no harvest, meaning not all the harvest dice were like that. Any dice that show a harvest marker on it are then rolled. And if they show a harvest marker again, that's okay. But now it got that much harder to have a harvest for this upcoming year. Mm -hmm. Then everybody deals up to the number of cards that they're supposed to have in a four player game is six cards. Any players that passed after the first player may have cards left in their hand. So I would have these two, for instance. I would only get four more cards. And then do it again. The game ends at the end of the... Mm, what? You get the whole number of cards. No. You deal up to the number of mm. cards. No, I think you... Oh, no. you have both? Oh, then I apologize. We screwed each, that up. Yeah, you deal each player seven new cards. So Your we're six hand in limit a four at the end of the thing is four. So if you happen to have five cards left over at the end of a round, you would have to discard down to four, but you still receive the full hand of seven cards. And that's one of the advantages of not passing, passing. first, because the player that passes first has to discard any remaining cards. Thank you for the catch on that, J-Rex. <laughs> at the end of the game... End of the sixth round, we're going to have uh, a harvest automatically. Everything will happen as long as there is a disc on there. Again, only the top two will score, will advance on those, but all four actions starting with the arrow there. Then we will go into final scoring. Final scoring is whatever point you have, and then harvest tokens, 12 points. Whoever has the most points wins. And that, folks, is Patrick Core. Let's play the game. Yay! All right. Any questions no. that you guys saw? Uh, I didn't no. See no. Oh. There was a lot of chat 
Um, <laughs> oh, and there are there is a solo variant from David Turtsy, oh, yes. and all of these cards that have this symbol up here in the corner are the solo, are the solo variant, and there is a regular six-sided die for the solo variant as well, but those are off camera for that. Go ahead. Yeah, as you yeah, were saying. So they, there was a lot of chat about pizza. Um, I think a lot of it, we think we've got a lot of orders in right now. Okay. That. All right. So, now now um, I'm hungry. Thanks, yeah, guys. Yeah, weather chat of where everything is. Okay. Uh, let's see. Oh, off the lip. Um, okay. Any other questions? Go ahead, Shrey. Yeah. During, during cleanup, um, yes. when you're rolling dice that were, uh, if you, there was no harvest, I think you roll the dice that are not harvest. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. Oh, we totally got that backwards. Yeah, we got that wrong step, step last step night, and that makes a difference. Step two. As a result, some or all of the rolled dice may show the harvest icon, and that is completely okay. Okay, if there was a harvest this round, all of the dice showing the harvest icon, which would be all of them, right. are re-roll. If not. Okay, yeah, um, keep reading. If not. if not. Oh, if not, re-roll only the dice not showing the harvest icon. Oh, oh, what you oh, yeah, 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 well done, Shrey. Welcome. Picture. That all right. does yeah. change. Cool. There we go. Yes. Yeah, we Thanks, there. Hey, Derek. Yeah, a couple of major rules wrong last night, but that's all right. okay. Hey, Banker Dave. What's up? Welcome, everybody. Yeah, hey, Banker Dave. All right. I think that's all. If somebody will deal out those cards. Yeah.